thank you for joining me. I'm at Brookmans Park Station, or standing just outside Brookmans Park Station, and that was a Thameslink Class 700002 heading south. I've um, come here today to have a look around the village and the park, and we're going to go and look for a rather exciting looking folly. So, oh, and there's an Azuma coming, so let's just see that. Two Azumas, two five car ones together, and then we'll get on and with this walk. I was 801 107, 801 108. So, Brookmans Park Station, it's a bit of a later addition to the East Coast Main Line. It opened in um, July 1926. You can just see the little ticket office down there, um, and then there's the bridge. Unfortunately, it's not um, disabled accessibility, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so, maybe at some point in the future, we'll see this station modernised and we'll have to come back and have a look. But right now, this is the village centre of Brookmans Park. So it's quite an interesting village. It's um, not your sort of really old historical village. As I said, they opened the station in 1926 once the East Coast Main Line had already been there for a fair few years. It's quite well known in aviation as a marker point for planes flying. Once they've left the London airports, they, they go by Brookmans Park and then they usually go by Clacton as their marking points on where to fly. So what we're going to do, we're going to go and have a look at an old country estate once we get out the village and um, then have a, a look through to find an old folly. So this is the village centre. As you can see it feels like a typical London suburban village but we're not in London, we're in Hertfordshire and as I said I didn't come by train. I came here in my larder so my larder is quite happily sitting here in the village centre while we go and explore. It does look nice with all the blossom out on the trees. So let's just have a quick look across here. Well, this is interesting. So look, got a Russian classic car there, and um, there you have a German classic car. I'll let you decide which one you prefer both. I personally prefer the Lardas, but I do appreciate seeing any other form of classic car. So here is, this is called Broadmoor Green, this area of the village. There's also um, a transmitting station. That's the other thing that Brookmans Park is quite well known for, but I'm going to head up there. We're going to try and find what was here in Brookmans Park before this um, village of Brookmans Park appeared. That's a really cute little estate agent there, made of wood, little village pump. So I'm going to head off in that direction and um, let's go and explore a place called Gobians Park. Just found this little council crest here on this planter. It's interesting, this is North Mims. And that, that is the folly we're going to go and look for. But why is North Mims spelt different to South Mims? I really don't know that. So if anyone does know, please comment and tell me because they're like next to each other. But one spelt with an I, one spelt with a Y. Anyway, this is the church. It's the United Reform Church. I do quite like this era of church. Um, you know, they're a bit um, underappreciated, but I think it's, I really like the little tower on top. So we're going to walk past the church and um, keep going and uh, have a look. We're looking for a road called Moffat's Lane and up there there used to be a farm. So we'll have a look at the old farmhouse because I believe that still stands. One last look at the church and then we're going to carry on to Gobians Park and find that folly. I've just walked up Moffat's Lane. It's a very residential area, as you can see, but what we're going to find very soon is um, what would have been here before the railway and before Brookmans Park grew up. As you can see, it's quite a normal width road. It starts to narrow here and takes on more the feel of a country lane with, well, with a lot of houses. Probably looking at these, there must have been one property here. They've demolished it and built for perhaps in the um, 1980s at some point. Have a look at this building ahead of us though. You can see it looks um, so much older. Well, it is so much older. This would have been here before the railway because this building here is the old Moffat's farmhouse. So imagine this would have all just been rural land. So there'd have been a farm here, Moffat's farm. And then there was the Gobians Park. And there was another estate where a man with a similar name to Brookman lived. And that's where supposedly Brookman's Park comes from. See how suddenly you've got an older wall and there's your old farmhouse. So this is what would have been at Brookman's Park before the railway. Oh, and up here, it looks like um, there's an old chapel up here. 
Whatever. I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, if anyone wants to know? Oh yeah, just so you know. Look, see, Moffat's farm. So, yeah, not a farmhouse anymore. A, a much older house in a residential area. Um, but that would have been here way before the railway. So this building here, to me, looks like it's possibly an old chapel going by the windows, and clearly it's a fair bit older than any of the other buildings. So if anyone knows more about this, or this a little chapel, um, do let me know. And then just up here behind these trees, there's a few more older houses. Um, but soon we're going to find our way into Gobins Park, and we're going to go and find a site of the old mansion before walking down through the valley to look for that folly. I'll just let you see that old chapel. I've now come into Gobians Park. Now, this would have been a big country estate. It had been, the house would have been back here somewhere. You can actually see there's a slight flat bit and then a bit of a drop. So I'm, I'm kind of guessing a bit the location, but it must have been round here somewhere. What happened was though the other estate in Brookmans Park, which is um, a mile or so that way, the people who lived there, they acquired this estate and they were jealous. So they demolished this house but then their house burnt down as well, so there's now no country houses left here. But at least we have got this really nice park. And we're going to follow on down to the lake, and then down beyond the lake, there's um, the Ray Brook, which is um, the river we're going to follow to try and find this folly. So this lake must be maybe fed by a spring that then goes down into the Ray Brook. So I'm going to keep walking on down towards the lake. I've made it down to the lake, so imagine once, probably all these trees along here weren't there, and the house would have looked down across their gardens onto the lake, and this would have been the centrepiece of the estate, and, the ha and looking across the lake, you'd have seen the house up there. It's all been very nice and attractive once, well, it is now, just in a different sort of way. We're going to follow the lake along down there, we're going to find the Ray Brook and um, eventually make our way up to the most exciting thing on this walk, um, the Brookmans Park Folly. Well, we've now reached the end of the man-made lake. What we're going to do now is follow the path down the hill slightly to the Ray Brook. So a moment ago we was yeah, about there. So I've just come along the edge of the lake. I'm going to follow this path down here. And this is one of those videos where I've literally never been here before. So as I show this to you, this is my first time of seeing it as well. So um, let's just see what we find. Oh yeah, it says, so it says Gobians Woods Nature Reserve run by the Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust. So let's go and see what we find. So down here somewhere, we should find the Ray Brook. So my plan is to, well I can show you from here actually, we'll follow the Ray Brook to about there. You can just see there's some Wellingtonia trees, that's always um, an indication that somewhere is an old country estate because Wellingtonia trees aren't native, they wouldn't naturally be growing there. So someone's clearly planted them when the estate was planned. Um, so we're just going to see what we can see of that estate, but it's really kind of come on quite a long way and it's turned into this public park it is today. What we've got here is another, another little pond. I believe from looking on a map, it shows this pond and I think it's a spring and there's another little stream which flows down to the Ray Brook. I assume that there must be another spring up there to feed that lake or maybe it's um, when they created it, they just built a good enough lining to keep the water in. I'm not too sure on that one. And uh, as we get to here, we've got a very nice old oak tree. So no doubt that's been here during the days of when this was a country estate. And uh, all these hawthorns look really nice with their blossom out. Might as well I'll keep walking now. I think the Ray Brook is going to be just down here. So this is a natural river, which, um, you know, they've kind of built the park around really. So my plan is to then follow the Ray Brook, and what we should find is the remains of an old bridge, part of the old um, carriageway route in and out of the estate, and then from there we'll be able to walk up to find um, the main purpose of making this video, this folly. So we're now coming into another woodland, it looks very attractive. As for that pond I mentioned up there, you can just see here, you can see, um, it's not really a stream, but there's a 
a little trickle of water just flowing down there towards the Ray Brook. This looks really nice, this woodland here. And I can just, I can just see a bridge up here over the Ray Brook. I'm not sure if that's actually the bridge I want, um, but we'll go to it anyway. I'm probably going to walk up that, that way up there. It's a very nice, very attractive woodland, quite nice and quiet as well. It's, um, you know, sometimes you go out on these days and there's more people than trees in these woodlands, but this is really nice. Well, here's the Ray Brook. There's not a huge amount of water in it. I expect if we'd come down here a couple of months ago, all this would have had water in. Um, but there's there's a trickle flowing through. Well, it's even a suspension bridge. I like this. A little wooden suspension bridge over the Ray Brook. That's really nice. Though. Actually, it's a metal suspension bridge. But the uh, handles are teak. Of course, I've done other videos about bridges that haven't been quite successful as this. Um, have a look at link on screen now to see that. So, yeah, here we go. The path that way looks nice, though. Let's just go along here over a couple more bridges. But I'm actually heading in that direction. But this, these bridges just look too enticing not to bother with. Now, I'm going to... Um, let's have a look. Let's go over here, because I have just spotted something um, through the trees, which is what I keep saying we're, we're actually looking for in this video. If we can get up to here... Um, show this to you from the trees. You may or may not be able to see just there, yeah, there on the horizon. That's the folly we're looking for, but we're going to go up there and have a closer look. So I've got to go back down through the woods and uh, see what we can find. We'll just come along the Ray Brook a little bit further and um, we have found the remains of an old bridge. You can just see there, there is a little brick arch there. Whether there would have been a bigger arch here, I'm not sure, but you can see an embankment either side. So during those days when they would have ridden around in their horse and carriages, they would have passed over here. Think about it, royalty would have passed over here at some point in the 15th century, probably before the folly was built. And if you look that way, you can just see a slight sort of kink in the land where they would have ridden up across the field out of here. Oh, and actually, if you look down there, you can see the foundations of the bridge. So they would have continued up there on up to where the Brookmans Park estate was. So it's a bit complicated how basically two estates have merged and they didn't seem to like each other and they knocked each other's houses down. But, well, that's how things were back then. But this, yeah, it's a bit like doing an old railway walk, standing on the remains of an old bridge that's not going to go anywhere. I believe, though, it probably only collapsed in the 60s. I've heard it was people walked across here, probably doing a similar walk to what I'm doing, although not holding a camera and talking. Up until the 1960s, you could have crossed here, but maybe one day a lot of rain came along. Seems hard to believe now. The, the flow is quite low at the moment, but swept it away. I'm not sure. If anyone does know how the bridge got destroyed, then do comment and let me know. So, as I said, this is like a little kink. and um, would have gone straight up to where the folly is. So, there's this really... Only one thing left to do now is to oh, go over another little bridge. Not quite as exciting as the ones we saw back there. This one's just over a little sort of ditch. Um, but to continue through what I think is a really, really nice woodland. Oh, and there's another bridge up there. Uh, to continue through this woodland over more exciting little bridges, enjoy the walk. And then there should be a footpath up there to that folly. Um, here's another bridge. So probably if I'd come, as I said, earlier on if I'd come here a few weeks ago there'd have been water trickling down down there so um, let's just see if we can get a view of the folly again before we continue on up we might not get a great view through here but we might just get a slightly better view there we are there it is let's go and have a closer look now So I did say we would leave the woods and go up to the folly. We're going to do that very soon. But here, here's those Wellingtonias we could see from further back. Directly that way, you can just see the folly in the distance. But as for the bridge I was talking about, I think that was perhaps just a little estate bridge, the one back there used by farmers. Because here, I know it doesn't look like much here. Um, actually, talking of the trees, 
that's either a Wellingtonia or a Redwood. These ones are Fulias, these aren't Wellingtonias. Um, but they're all coniferous trees and none of them will grow here naturally, they've all been planted. This is the bridge, so um, you can just, we will go down in a moment, you can just see the bridge there. You can see the flints just here. So probably what would have happened was it would have had obviously a parapet each side of the bridge. Oh, in fact, look, look at that. There's um, fallen over there. That is um, the pier at the end of the bridge. So imagine a pier there, parapet with flint in to the other side and another pier. Let's go down and have a look. So, uh, I'm sure this woodland is going to look really, really nice in a few weeks time when all the bluebells comes out. But from standing up here, we get a really nice view of the bridge. Let's go down and have a closer look. Um, the river's quite narrow down there, so uh, what I should do, should be able to, should have worn wellies today, but it seemed like such a hot spring day that I didn't wear wellies. Another indication of it being a country estate is there's a few little rhododendron plants there, which um, as nice as they look, they are an invasive species. Right, come on, yeah, I can get across, there we go, across the river by jumping across. Here's the bridge, look at that. A very nice reflection. See the reflection of the trees on the other side. So I think this time, when I, I will leave the woods this time, I'll actually go and find this folly. But I'm really pleased to have found this this bridge so intact. It's very ruined and rustic looking, but it still does the purpose that um, means you can walk from one side of the river to the other, which is obviously you know what it was designed to do. So that would take you on up to the old Brookmans Park and this is the bridge. And I can just see, I don't think the camera's picking it out, but the folly's up there in the distance. So let's finally go up there and find the Brookmans Park folly. I've walked on up from the woodlands. I don't think the camera's gonna pick it out, but that noise you can hear, it's a little microlite flying above. Um, so we're almost at the folly. So down there, that is where the, um, the Ray Brook was. You might just see the microlite. There we go. The little microlite. So the Ray Brook was down there, and it was all part of um, the garden design by Charles Bridgman. He was a bit like um, Capability Brown, a bit of a person. Yeah, he designed lots of um, gardens with streams and follies, etc. But well, now we've effectively left the estate. We're here up on Hawkshead Road, right on the very edge of Brookmans Park. There's another little residential area up here. And it's on this green in front of us where this folly is, which we've come all the way from the railway station and where I parked my car over on Broadmoor Green to see this. Um, so it's been, I'd actually planned this to be a not particularly long walk and I was going to get in a car and go and do another walk today. But um, I've decided that, you know, I've done quite a lot today. This has been a pretty long walk. So if you are thinking of coming here, you know, um, you know, be prepared to have a good long walk. It's not the sort of place. I mean, if you wanted to just see the folly, yes, you could just pull your car up here and have a look. But if you want to see some of the the, um, the parkland like I did, which I really recommend. And of course you could come by train because, um, well, I've basically got to walk all the way back to the railway station anyway. So, you know, if you're in London, you could come up and do this day out. As for the folly, well, there it is. So it's built in the 17th century. Local rumor has it, there's a farthing between every piece of brick. So I'm certainly not gonna get a chisel and start chipping away to find out. There's a lodge house on the other side. That's quite an interesting looking building. But yeah, supposedly between the bricks, there's a farthing. I don't know how true that is. Look at that. What I don't know is, I don't think from looking at it, is there any stairs inside? Maybe there's just a ladder up each side. It'd be great to go up there though. They must, you must get some fantastic views, not just of the parkland, but the area around from the top. I've seen no pictures of it in the 1920s. It had all ivy up it and it wasn't looking great. And um, by the 1990s, it was cracked and the arch was actually starting to collapse and it was all held up with scaffolding and acros. Um, but then they restored it and now it looks great. It's a great two-star listed building. And I think it's um, a really, really impressive thing. See, I can just see through there 
whether the camera's going to uh, um, pick it out about where my finger is, I can just see the masts of uh, Brookmans Park transmitter station. So from the folly at the top end of the Gobians Park estate, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment and you know, why not get in your car, come on the train and um, do this walk for yourself. It's a very, very pleasant walk. Thank you very much. Goodbye.